Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, this is my third video, and what I want to try and do in this video is show you some of the things that are being talked about, and try to explain some of these uh, some of these terms to you, so you can become an expert on this. Like us, the fight continues. Let me show you some things here. These are F1s. That's what we call them. They call them a hybrid, right? And they are a hybrid. We cross a purebred Russian sow and a purebred Mangalitsa boar. And we get this nice little pig right here. They're real durable, very hardy, put up with the winters really well, and they grow good too. And plus they still have the characteristics of the Mangalitsa, the fat, and the meat that uh, our chefs like. Okay, these are about uh, four months old, I'd say. These are all females. We might keep them around for sows. They are an F1. If we bred them with a purebred Mangalitsa, we'd get an F2, three-quarter Mangalitsa. Okay, I'm going to show you a Russian next. All right, these are my sows, three of them anyway, and they're Russians. You can tell they're, they're friendly, they're nice gals. They've been around a long time, and they've done really well by us. They're real hardy. They live in the snow really well. These are the babies that they produce. Okay, that's those babies are F2s, so they're a hybrid. Um, that's their mom right there, and then their their dad is a purebred Mangalitsa. Right, nice babies. They have small litters. This gal had six, but two of them didn't make it. Okay, these are F1 sows. These guys just farrowed the night before last, and uh, these two sows were in here, and they they went at the same time. And I don't know whose babies are whose, and I don't think they do either. But they are are team feeding it, and they've done really well. Um, sometimes they can lay on them or step on them, and they have done. They're they're really good moms. They don't uh, they haven't lost any babies to that. I think there was one loss, but we're not sure why. Had some other sows in here at the time and caught me off guard and they might have had something to do with it. That's another gal over there. She had five little ones. And uh, they're really good moms. After they've had their babies, they just sleep a lot and feed their babies. Eat when they need to, drink when they need to. I'll get up closer. All right, here's a different shot of her. She had five. That's a good size litter for these. These are first-time sows, too, so they have small litters. But, you know, I'm showing you this because I want you to understand that the rhetoric that's coming out of the government right now is that these are feral pigs. They are wild animals. They don't go anywhere. This is their home. And they're surely not going to go live in the woods. It's pretty tough in the woods right now. Okay, now I want to show you the feeders. All right, these are the feeder pigs. These are... Uh, Male pigs that have been castrated, and their job in life is to eat, and then uh, they go to slaughter. So these guys are born here, and they live here, and they make one ride out of here, or they're slaughtered right here on the farm. We like to say they only have one ba bad day. They're kind of anxious for me to give them some food right now. Okay. This is their pen. They have about an acre or an acre and a half here. Okay, I showed you around outside. I showed you the pigs, the feeders, the sows, and the, the F1s, the purebred Russians, uh, the purebred, well, I didn't show you the purebred boar, but he looks just like those feeders. He was out there running with them. But I did this just to show you, this is what we do. Uh, there's no hidden agenda here. We raise these animals, we feed them, they feed us. We have chefs all over the country that like these pigs, we get them killed, we send them to them. It's as simple as that. There is no hidden agenda here at all. I can't say that for the other side. With the ISO, that is an acronym for the Invasive Species Order. With that ISO in hand, any DNR person can come on any farm in Michigan. That means the sovereignty of our land and our farms is over if they get their way. We filed uh, a week ago Friday in Misaki County and there are 
there's two or three, maybe even four uh, lawsuits going on in the state of Michigan. And I know people, a lot of people are going to see this that are not hog farmers, that are not even uh, livestock farmers. Even beyond that, we'll have people that are not farmers at all, and they'll say, this does not affect me. It does affect you, because what's at stake here is the sovereignty of the family farm. What that means is, as soon as the government comes on and starts to regulate how we do business on our farms, it is game over for the local food movement, and I mean game over. Uh, if they want to regulate the factory farms, that's fine, but we do not need them on our land. We know how to do our business. They're claiming right now that our animals get away and they become feral in the woods. Actually, they're claiming that our animals are feral on my side of the fence, which makes no sense. Uh, even in my dictionary, it does make sense. Our animals don't get away, and if they do get away and they wind up in the woods from some other farm, we have a shoot on site law here in Michigan, and that's, that'll take care of it. We have people that love to go in the woods and shoot things. I don't know why, but they do, and there's plenty of them. So uh, we don't have a problem here. What is going on here is uh, the sovereignty of the family farm is being threatened by our own government. And, and worse than that, they use our money to hire their lawyers to do this to us. Brings me to my next subject. We did file. We are going to court. Make no mistake. I appreciate your emails and phone calls and all that stuff, but this ain't going to be one with that. This is going to be one with dollars. And I need your dollars. If you go to my website, bakersgreenacres.com, we have a, a nifty little thing there that a friend of ours set up that you can just you can donate. And there's a few people that have donated, and I, I really appreciate it. You know, people from long in my past that have wanted to support me and support the local farm. This isn't about Baker's Green Acres. It ain't surely ain't about me. This is about the family farm in the United States of America. Right now it's being fought in Michigan, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if they get their way here in Michigan, it will spread. Because the industrial food complex does not like the trajectory of the family farm. And that's what we're talking about. We're not taking too much market share from them right now. But they don't like the fact that a lot of you people who are watching this uh, prefer to get your food from a local farm and support a local farmer. We've got problems with jobs here in the United States. What? Where, where is our government helping us with this? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, we're going to have to run this on our own. You are the sleeping giant out there. You are the sleeping giant. With lots of dollars, we can bury these guys. But we need lots of dollars. That's all there is to it. So uh, thanks for listening. And uh, remember, anyone can farm.